what's up everyone? Dave here from Drumio, and I'm sitting next to Dennis Chambers and I uh, got a question for you, Dennis. I would like to know who your influences were. Who were you listening to when you were starting uh, drumming? <coughs> of course, at the beginning, it was the drummers from Motown, of course. Um, and the guys from this, uh, well, the Al Jackson from Stax Recordings. Uh, when I heard Knock on Wood and all that stuff, Sam and Dave. Um, you know, because I was coming from, you know, learning how to play drums from a, a groove standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then there was James Brown's drummers, you know, whether it was Clyde Stubblefield or Melvin Parker or Jabo. Jabo. Um, and then there was the meters, you know, with the Zigaboo Mona Lisa. Um, these are the early guys I can think of that, that I was listening to, and it was because of my mom and, and you know, the band that she had. You know, that's what they were covering. And then I heard Buddy Rich, you know, that kind of just, just knocked everything out of the ballpark. Yeah. And then I, I was, you know, watching the speed and power, excuse me, and the finesse that he had while doing this, you know, I wanted to, you know, to capture that too. Um, and then, you know, then I, by learning um, who Buddy Rich was, I learned who uh, I learned who uh, Louis Belson was, mm. and then I started doing research on that kind of style of big band music, and then I found myself, you know, checking out Chick Webb, who was from Baltimore as well. Oh yeah, and um, and then you know floated into jazz, you know, like the bebop uh, uh, era, you know, listen to Max and uh, Roy Haynes, you know, the Elvin Jones. Uh, Brother L, boy, what a great spirit he was. Yeah. I miss him too. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, um, you know Tony Williams, um, Jack DeJanette, love Jack DeJanette, you know, his spirit and his contribution. Lenny White, uh, you know, a really big fan of Lenny's, you know, what, what he contributed as well. Uh, did I mention Billy Cobble? Not yet. Oh, yeah, Billy Cobble. Yeah. <laughs> Can't miss him, I mean, because, you know, with him, you know, uh, you can tell where all the drummers came out of, you know, especially, you know, I got, like, all these 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 bootleg tapes on him with the My Vishnu Orchestra, mm -hmm. and then when I do my history, uh, do some homework on, you know, researching a lot of that earlier stuff and see what drummers were doing then and hearing what Billy was doing then, it was, it was like two different things, you know? Yeah. And Billy kind of just, you know, like, um, he just brought the whole thing to a whole nother level of playing. And then when I saw him play, I couldn't sleep for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. you know? And it ain't that many people had that kind of effect on me, but, you know, I can tell you who, who had that kind of effect. It was Tony Williams when I saw him. Yeah. Um, uh, Billy Cobble, of course, and then there was uh, Jack DeJanette and Elvin Jones. You know, it had that effect on me where I couldn't sleep for 24 hours. No kidding, you know, yeah. Because I never saw anything like that before. Yeah. And and with Billy, the, some of the things that I remember seeing, I haven't seen it since, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's David Gabaldi. I love David Gabaldi's, you know, uh, uh, his uh, contribution and the way he, he uh, hear things, um, which is very special. And I got a lot of bootleg stuff on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> I did a lot of studying. He kept me up a many nights. Yeah. Know, like trying to think of, you know, copying some of that stuff that he laid down. And, uh, and uh, you know, then I got a chance to, you know, meet him and, and hang out with him and become good friends with him. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very special. Um, and I hope he gets well soon, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, sound like he is. Um, and I mentioned Zigaboo, mm -hmm. Mona Lisa. Uh, um, it, I mean, I listened to anybody and everybody that had something to say. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, there they, are these new players who I, I liked some of them, too, you know. Um, yeah, who, who are the guys that you're listening to now that are keeping you inspired or that you are keeping an eye on? 
Well, Vinny is not new anymore, but I, I, I love listening to him. Mm. And, and, and I didn't mention Gad, but Gad is another one I, I listen to. Of course, yeah. Marvin Smitty Smith, a lot of people, you know, kind of s- sleeping on him or slept on him. But this guy is a phenomenal player. Mm-hmm. I mean, really a phenomenal player. Uh, Marvin Smitty Smith, and there's Gary Husband uh, from London. Uh, he used to play with Alan Holdsworth band. Mm. And, you know, he plays keyboards with Billy. He used to play keyboards with Billy's band, and he also played keyboards with John McLaughlin band. No kidding, yeah. But he's a great drummer, you hmm. know. Um, you know, there's Gary and um, the younger guys is my, little Mike Mitchell. Yeah. You know, who's a phenomenal guy. Uh, um, really a great player. Um, I like what he what you know what he's saying with the drums. Yeah. Um, um, Thomas Pridget. You know, really yeah. love what he says with the no joke. No kidding, yeah. And, and I like having conversations, you know, conversations with him too. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he's got a different way of seeing things, you know. And mm-hmm. that's what it's all about, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not just your way and how you see it, you know. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as, as they used to say. Yeah, yeah. And he, he found another way of doing it, you know. Another way of thinking about it, you yeah. know. Um, and I like, I, you know, I really enjoy watching him play. Um Tony Royster, you know, who I, I spent some time with, you know, a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, but I didn't teach him. And people, you know, got that misconstrued that, that I, I sat down and taught him how to play. I didn't. Hmm. I don't want to make sure I got that clear. Yeah, good. And yeah. Um, he basically, in the beginning, he basically learned by watching some of my videotapes. Mm-hmm. That's how he got motivated. Um, and um, I did a video tape with him and it was based off of a concept of uh, a video I always wanted to do is called inspirations you know and uh, around about the time it was time to do this it was going to be Billy Cobham and Tony Williams and myself mm. well Tony Williams died and so that was the end of that yeah and then I was going to cancel on the idea of Mr. Bob Gatson um, um, uh, one of the uh, creators of uh, of the, uh, or not creator, but one of the, the designers of uh, Noble and Cooley drums. And um, he's a great drummer. And he is a great uh, conceptist and a great writer, you know. Um, got with him and, you know, he remembered I always wanted to do this inspiration tape. And he was the one that recommended Tony on the video. Hmm. And I asked him why, why Tony? He says, well, you know, you know, you inspired Tony. And I didn't see it that way at first. But then I remember having conversations with his dad and his dad said, yeah, well, it was, it was the one thing that kept him still. The reason why he started playing drums, it, drums one of the reasons why he started playing drums was, it was because of my video. No kidding. And I'm like, okay, well, let's revisit that. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it's funny, you know, I, in my head, I, I could still hear that squeaky Mickey Mouse high voice of his back then. <laughs> and then when I see him now, whenever I see him now, he's got all this bass in his voice. And I'm looking at him like, I'm looking at him like an alien. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, like, he's all grown up now. He's got, you know, hair on his face. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a funny thing watching people, watching people grow, you know. Yeah. And I remember he used to ask me questions all the time, like, what is it like being one of the world's greatest drummers? And I'm telling him, like, I don't think, I don't see myself. I never thought of myself that way. Yeah. And I don't think anybody, you know, really do, you know, maybe the younger guys do, uh, you know, I think, you know, because, you know, <laughs> excuse me, when I, when it, you, know, you see guys, you know, nowadays coming to, you know, when they come of their own, and you know they say things in print. You know when they, you know, uh, you know people talk about like like they don't they don't listen to anybody. You know they just picked up a pair of sticks and this is what comes out. Mm-hmm. And I'm going like man, you know, there's no way possible you're gonna p- pick up a pair of sticks and sound like Vinny Caliuta. Yeah. Or he's gonna sound like Billy Cobham or sound like me or or Dave Weckl or, or yeah. You know Peter Erskine. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and Peter Erskine is another one of my favorites too. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, 
And I, I try to explain to them, you know, you no matter what you do in life and what you become successful at or or maybe not successful at, somebody had to inspire you to do this. Yeah. Every time you walk into a movie theater, you know, there's music playing. Every time you turn the TV on, there's music. Every time you turn the radio on, there's music. Mm-hmm. So somebody had to inspire you to, to do something, you know, and if you become a drummer, you had to hear somebody else do it before you, you know, before right. you did it. Yeah. So don't give me that bull crap like, you know, you just picked up a pair of sticks and this is what came out. Yeah. And you just happened to sound like Vinnie Caliuta. <laughs> yeah, right. Or myself. Yeah. You know, I knew what it took, you know, for me to get to, you know, where I, I was. I'm not that same kind of guy or same kind of player anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, um, interest is, is, has changed. My interest has changed. And, and, and music has changed definitely a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just not that kind of player anymore. I mean, back when I joined Peep, uh, Parliament Funkadelic, I used to practice all the time. Mm-hmm. And and um, in order for me to keep the gig, I had to stop practicing because it was two different interests there. One, my interest was just you know trying to keep the chops up. Yeah. The the interest of the gig is like how funky can you get? Yeah. And, you know, when I practice, I wasn't practicing on how funky I can get because I know I can get funky. Yeah. But um, every time I try to throw some crazy lick in there, you know, like, you know, George will turn around, keep it on the one. Give me the one, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Keep it right there, drummer. Don't speed up, don't slow down. Put it in the pocket. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I had to, like, think about all of that and. And, and realized, like, look, you know, in order to keep this gig, because I really I like the band, you know, I got to give up, you know, a, a, a part of myself for a minute, which is that clean, execute, um, uh, execute things the best of my abilities and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, so I had to give all of that up. I mean, still execute enough to, to, to play, you know, like what they needed me to play. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and then I had to, you know, go down a, a whole different avenue with that. You know, I had to revisit, the, you know, the James Brown drummers and, and things like that. And also, you know, re, revisit some of the earlier funkadelic drummers. You know, mm-hmm. um, like Tiki Fullwood, Tyrone Lampkin. Tyrone Lampkin was a, a beautiful player um, that that played with funkadelic. Jerome Braley, who used to play with uh, the Five Stair Steps. Um, and the Chambers Brothers, mm-hmm. you know, he played with them. Yeah. And he was the, the guy who wrote Tide Roof Off the Sucker. Yeah. You know, he played with the band, and he, he contributed a lot with Funkadelic as well. Um, but those are my favorite players, and I, I may have missed some, but those are the ones I can think of that, were, that, that stood out the most uh, yeah. with me. Well, very cool. Th- thank you so much for sharing. I, I know... A guy like you, a lot of people follow you, and a lot of people, you're their inspiration. So it's always good to see one oh, more. Oh, I forgot. Oh, you um, forgot one. I forgot. There's, there's also Ronald Bruner. I don't know how I forgot him. Yeah. Ronald Bruner is another, another uh, phenomenon. And uh, I don't know if you know, there's a, a guy named Greg Clark. Yep. Um, he is a great player, you know. But that's, you know, that's a whole different uh, era, mm-hmm. you know, of players. Well, like I said, it's great. It's great to hear the things or the drummers, I guess, that you uh, listened to and that you inspired you. And uh, if you guys haven't checked out some of those names, I mean, they're they're heavy hitters, and mm-hmm. they they definitely, like you said, had something specific to say on the drums. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, there's one more. One more, Chris. Coleman. This is great, Chris Coleman I'm and Chris sure. Dave and Chris Dave. Yeah, yeah. the Chris's. And the Chris's. Yeah. I don't know how I skipped over them. Yeah. But, you know, Chris Coleman, I, you know, he's a beautiful, not not only a beautiful player, but he's a beautiful guy. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you, I, I love hanging out with him because he loves to laugh. Yeah. You know, you know, so his, his, his laugh is very affection, affectionate. Yeah. You know, you sit there, you, you, you laugh your butt off because he's laughing. Mm-hmm. Um. But you know, you get by, he gets behind a drum kit, and it's like you're not laughing anymore. You know, you're like, what the what the heck is going on here? Scratching your head. And then he plays basses, uh, bass guitars, just yeah. as well as well as he plays drums. Crazy. Yeah.
I'd love to get some of these guys out on Dromeo yeah. to, to, to share their stories as well. But uh, very much appreciated. Thank you so much, Dennis. And again, thanks for coming out to Dromeo. I hope you had a good time out here. I had a great time. Awesome. I had a great time. If you guys want to see more of Dennis, head on over to Dromeo.com. We'll see you guys all later.